Welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Ajibade with the Brain and Body Foundation. And we are continuing our discussion on NAFDAQ, but we're going to focus more on building a strong regulatory system. And if you were here with us last week, you saw what the passion that Prof spoke about, the importance of putting things quality, putting quality control in place for the sake of the average person, that's you, <laughs> on the streets who isn't in tune with all the medical things going on. But we want to bring this over to you. So Prof, thank you very much again, Ma. Thank you so <laughs> nice to be here. For, thank you. for making this time. Thank you. Um, so we've talked about some of the challenges, we've talked about NAFTA, we've talked about the importance of bringing producing safe drugs and making sure that these safe drugs get to the people that need to, it needs to be gotten it to. There's a lot of logistics involved. There's a yes. lot of technology that has to be put in place and you are beginning to put that in place. Let's talk about some of the things that I've heard you talk about and I am particularly passionate about. The creation of essential drugs, especially drugs that we Nigerians particularly need, making that possible within Nigeria. That's a very good uh, uh, approach or topic to discuss. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I came, I met NAVDAC as, a, as an emergency that was bombarded by industrial strikes. Mm -hmm. There were problems with the staff and so on. And from day one, I put that as premium. You see, it doesn't matter what you want to do. If you have staff that are dissatisfied, maybe because of one thing or the other, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Yes. So I believe in discipline. I want a disciplined workforce. But a disciplined workforce, you've got to listen to them. You've got to know what the problems are. Mm -hmm. So my first four months, part of what I did was to listen and see how we can make their demands, you know, or come halfway or whatever. Okay. So we work, and of course, work with the council, the council of NAVDAC, uh, to improve their allowances. Uh, we first of all had the conditions of service which they never had <laughs> in terms of completing the document, the scheme of service. Uh, so I paid a lot of attention mm. to the staff mm. because I wanted a motivated, disciplined workforce that was part of what started working for the agency mm. Be uh, because i see them as a whole and that whole if it's not a whole it's not going to work did you have a vision at that time for what you were wanting NAFDAQ to be or you were just trying to understand the system i wanted NAFDAQ to be an organization that touches the person on the street positively meaning if they said this drug is good the drug is good mm. uh, and it is staff that will do that right so that's that is the way i approach i approached everything mm -hmm. and uh, before i came i never knew that there was drug abuse problem mm. in nigeria so again the first four five months i was talking about tramadol coding i never knew that we had problems mm. Then I realized a month to my resumption that we were not at the port. NAVDAQ was not at the port. No, what, do you, what do you mean you were not at the port? We Everybody sees NAVDAQ at the port. No, we were supposed to be controlling importation, exportation. NAVDAQ was removed from the port in 2011. Wow. So I started, you know, running all over the place. So who was inspecting <laughs> the drugs? NAVDAQ was not at the port. Okay. And that was part of the reason why we have upsurge in drug abuse. Right. And right. thank God the Buhari administration, through National Security Advisors Office, came along with me, you know. And May 18, May 16, last year, we were returned back to the ports. Just 2018? 2018. So for seven years, Nandak was not at the ports. Wow. So that's wow. part of the reason why we, have, we are inundated wow. with fake medicines, fake old unwholesome drugs by the way fake medicine when people were talking about 70 percent fake medicine that is not true 
that is just the figment of some people's imagination. I said it's more or less. It's less. It's less than that. Okay. It's the figment <laughs> of their imagination because you can imagine seventy percent. That would be terrible. That would be scary. It's very, very scary. Yes. But because NABDAC has done a lot of studies, mm -hmm. which is part of building a strong regulatory system, a lot of studies to see how much of our drugs are fake. And the last study that they did was that about 17%. Mm. And that is also part of, partly because of our porous borders. Mm. We are bordered by, by, by five nations, mm. you know, uh, and people just walk into, you know, literally walk into without any control. Well, there's control, but le uh, not as much control. Uh, mm. So that is part of what I have to face. Mm. But the narcotics, I never knew. Mm -hmm. that we had that much problem mm -hmm. and for fake medicines we have multi <laughs> multi uh, what do we call it multi-pronged approach because take uh, anti-malaria mm -hmm. we have this uh, mobile authentication system right you scratch you call the number and you, you text the number mm -hmm. and they will tell you that it is fake or it's or not fake know. right you know uh, we had the true scan. Nigeria was the first regulatory agency in the world to use true scan. Okay. It's a Raman based uh, uh, technology where it will show you the fingerprint. Okay. Once you like a wand okay. on, the, on the tablet or whatever. We started using that, but that we're going to restart because the technology or the software became outdated and we have to buy new ones, you know. Was that for malaria as well? For, no, for, for any drug actually, but for the malaria, this, the mobile authentication system was specific okay. for anti-malaria okay. uh, drugs. Okay. Uh, so that is part of, you know, how to build a strong system to ensure that what the patient is supposed to get is what they are actually taking and that is not going to affect their health uh, negatively. Mm. Yes. That, that's a lot because uh, doing all that software, it, it, to me, it seemed like an overhaul of so many different things that you're having to do. We have, that, is, that is NAVDAC. <laughs> and that is why IT is extremely important. We had a pharmacist come in here and she's, she's really into um, safety and, um, and drug resistance and all those yes. things. So I was, I was asking her about her, <laughs> uh, how does uh, fake drugs come into drug resistance to today's store also? add to the problem of drug resistance yes. and of course it does, course it, does have, do it, it does for example uh, uh, antimicrobial resistance Antibi exactly. uh, for antibiotics if you misuse antibiotics if you use antibiotics at a lesser or it contains a lesser amount mm -hmm. it is going to lead to antimicrobial resistance right. and then the medicine that is supposed to work will not work and even I our food chain our food chain will add too much antibiotics to the feed we eat the meat, right. the antibiotics get into our system. Oh, oh my goodness. So it, it's a multi-pronged problem. So you have to work with agriculture as well. Yes, right? we, have, we, have, we have. Of course, we have to do agrochemicals <laughs> to ensure that uh, the chemicals are well used. I think you have more than 24 hours a day for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Folks, we'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. So, building a strong regulatory system in Nigeria under NAFDAQ. Essential drugs, there's a need for us to make that in Nigeria. Yes. What are you think? What are your thoughts about that? Essential drugs, my thoughts goes to local manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, first of all, let's go. Essential drugs, antimalarials, antimalarials, antibiotics, anti tuberculosis, antivirals. Okay. You know, for AIDS. AIDS, exactly. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, at the peak of the HIV AIDS uh, epidemic, I never knew that Nigeria had a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. uh, but to talk about Africa, about 30 million Africans died before drugs became available. Hmm. Died from? Yeah. HIV AIDS. Wow. About 31 million Africans died from HIV AIDS hmm. before the drugs became available. And my emphasis is on drug security. Hmm. Any country that cannot manufacture most of their drugs, that country is in for a big shock. Hmm. So my emphasis and a lot of my activities are now geared towards local manufacturing. Hmm. Uh, talk about HIV AIDS drugs, we need to be producing our own 
HIV AIDS drugs within the country. But it's not very expensive though. That's it is expensive. However, there are some companies that are responding to that. Hmm. Of course, there are companies that are making a lot of anti-malarials mm -hmm. and antibiotics. Yes. But antiretrovirus, some companies are responding to that. Because you need accessibility and you need affordability. Right. And if it is accessible, it means you know, it's manufactured in motor or it's manufactured wherever in Nigeria, it can easily get to the patient. And because no shipping or whatever mm -hmm. cost, it will be affordable. So yeah, you would have to. I mean, the way, I don't know all the details now, but you would, ha if a company from outside the country or within the country wants to set up yes. such a thing, you would have to make allowances, so to speak, and cooperate with them as much as possible. Exactly. Yeah. That okay. is extremely important, and I, uh, waivers, things like that. Tax is incentives. Mm -hmm. You know, the local manufacturers in Nigeria faces tremendous challenges because they have to. I'm talking of drug now. Mm. We have to import everything except water. Mm. All the raw materials they have to. Wow. And that is costly. Mm. And then with the depreciation of Naira about four, three, four years ago, that didn't help at all. But they are still forging ahead. Mm. It is now encouraging them through better tax incentives to ensure that first we will have drug security and once we have drug security it means we are manufacturing and when we are manufacturing we are employing our mm. children fantastic yes. yes and then with the way navdac is going now we are building navdac according to international best practices mm. then our own manufacturers that we approve where well, you know their products and so on can trade with other countries. For example, we have the West African Medicine Regulatory Harmonization Group okay. under WAHO, West African Health Organization. Some of our products that are being manufactured here now will be reviewed by the group, you know, by the West African Medicine Regulation Harmonization mm -hmm. so that our products in Nigeria can be sold in West Africa. Mm -hmm. Then I'm part of the uh, African Medicine Regulatory Harmonization Group. I'm okay. actually the steering committee chair oh, wow. that is based in Nepal. The goal is for us as Africans to be able to trade with each other, but we have to trade in quality products. Are there other people like you who share the same vision? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, from different countries. Yes, yeah, okay. yes. Okay, so. Uh, so it is a unified African thing that will, to make sure that Africans get quality medicines. Hmm. So we have that, you know, goal uh, in terms of uh, collaboration and harmonization. And then, of course, we have uh, the reliance. I mentioned reliance. You cannot work in silo. Yes. As a regulatory agency. Right, right. Because your drug may get to Malaysia or Malaysia drug may come to you yeah. and if, the, if there's weakness in the regulatory system, yes. there's going to be a problem. Right. So we have to collaborate and the rates, uh, WHO now rates uh, regulatory agencies one to four with a lot of indicators, a lot of evidences that you have to produce as the head of regulatory agency or us. I hope we are passing. We are passing. We started low, but okay. we are inching up and inching up. Uh, oh God, you know, the importance of that is that without a regulatory agency having a level three or four, which is four is the highest, that, reg that country cannot manufacture vaccines. Mm -hmm. So if NAVDAC is not three or four, Nigeria cannot manufacture vaccines. So whatever we are doing to strengthen our regulatory system is to make sure that Nigeria can manufacture and Nigeria can trade and that the health of our people can be protected. And that will save a lot of money. A lot of money. Employment will, of will, will, will help with the unemployment situation. That's right. And of course, save a lot of lives. That's right. So, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited for the, for the years to come. How many years do you still have with us? <laughs>
hope you're not going back to the years. <laughs> three years. Three plus years. Plus years. <laughs> and then we can talk about another. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. We would so much love to keep on working with you in this, in this regard because, I mean, I, just the short time now, we can see how this helps the man on the street. It does. helps the man on the streets to know what to do. Yes. And there's, there's nothing like knowledge. There's nothing like knowledge. And uh, with NADAC and your help that we're doing now, mm. uh, the different directorates functions mm. within NADAC will come and explain several things. You know, food, drug, for example, using carbide. Yeah. Using carbide to ripen food, which our people are doing. Uh, destroys the skin and uh, the, the kidney the kidney yes so we are educating the fruit marketers yeah. now not to use carbide to ripen fruits so but you have to t you know, just education now you have to tough, uh, put some strong stringent of course, measures in place we have to put very, we are putting stringent measures in place uh because we are taking samples mm -hmm. of food from different markets and mm -hmm. going back to the lab okay. to test okay and see whether you know they are you know complying or not. Stay tuned be right back after this break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, so let's talk Ma, about some of the common foods that we eat that are in the market that we have. We are basically clueless about the health benefits or otherwise. We mentioned carbides. Yeah, the food. Used to, yeah. It's like it's like a liquid that you do. They put in. Actually, it is it's a it's a powder that is put in water. Mm -hmm. But once it gets into water, it becomes very dangerous because now it can easily penetrate the fruit mm -hmm. that you are soaking in, uh, into the water. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, the chemical that is there causes kidney damage. Mm. Uh, but generally we don't know that we shouldn't toy around with chemicals yeah. and sometimes we think the more I'm not, and I'm not talking of carbide now we think the more we use of a chemical the better no mm. the, the codex which is a, an FAO uh, standard uh, uh, indices have stipulated the levels above which toxicity, side effects, and whatnot can happen. Mm -hmm. But we still don't have that culturally that it is not the amount you use, but it, is, sure composition. it is making sure that you comply and it is there on the, on the label and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, for example, about six weeks ago, I was in Kaduna talking with farmers mm -hmm. with my veterinary uh, and allied products uh, directorate uh, director actually we were talking to our people farmers on how not to overuse agrochemicals okay because of the health implications uh so that is how vast our own scope right. is right. but let's talk of day-to-day -day food right uh oil Palm oil? The, uh, the palm oil, yes. Okay. Palm oil has a lot of triglycerides. Mm -hmm. uh, any oil that can settle as semi-solid okay. at room temperature mm -hmm. will very likely settle or start building along the vessels or along the blood vessels. Really? Over time. Really? Yes. And once it's like a pipe, once the plaque that is caused from this buildup increases, the path for the blood mm -hmm. to travel becomes less and less, and then there will be cardiovascular problems. So heart attacks, strokes, exactly, kidney it's, disease, it's, it's ischemic stroke, and whatnot. Yes. Of, of, are you telling me food. That from food can actually black like palm oil that everybody uses? Yes, the palm oil is fine, but use it. A little, just use a little of it. I don't, I don't know, we don't know what you mean by a little because we cook our soup with. But uh, you know, it doesn't have to be flowing. You know, it doesn't have to have layer of palm oil mm. on, uh, uh, on mm. top of the fork. Mm. No, just use a little uh, and use vegetable oil a lot. So vegetable oil is, safe, is safer. 
a vegetable oil is safer, okay. you know, uh, than palm, palm, oil. palm oil. There's nothing wrong in using palm oil, but you just say, use a little of I've it. I've heard some people call palm oil a superfood. That's like <laughs> one of the most healthy, it's one of the healthiest <laughs> things you can put in your body. Uh, you know, to some extent, but after, you know, it becomes a problem. And because so we, we black people, and in, uh, in, uh, I, I told you before we started, the show was that one of the reasons we started the show was to raise awareness about black people's yes. propensity towards certain kind of conditions, like That's cardiovascular right. disease. That's right. That, uh, and we tend to get more atherosclerosis. Schools, exactly. We tend to get our blood vessels blocked more, more often. We tend to suffer all these conditions. And now, now we're saying that in addition to the which seems to be a genetic propensity, we also seem to have a cultural baggage, health, 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 uh, food baggage. Oh so my goodness. Okay, so what else? Palm oil. We talk about palm oil carbide, and then oh. palm oil carbide um, fat. Of but course, fat from meat. From meat, okay. You should, it's, it's always good to defat your meat. Okay. Because those can cause even more damage okay. to, the, to the vessels or cause blood blockage. I see. Uh, so it's best to eat uh, ch chicken, lean meat as opposed to lean meat, yeah. red meat. And of course, if you're eating lean meat, we need to take off the skin and the, uh, the fat under the skin mm -hmm. as well. Take fat under the skin. Okay. Uh, okay. A lot chicken, of fish. fish uh -huh. Our people use, eat a lot of fish, which is good. Right. But, but the, ch the challenge with fish too, the toxicity and uh, the, the chemicals. Wherever, well, depending on where they harvest it. Yeah. And also, uh, part of agrochemicals, uh, people use hormones. Uh, yeah, to true. make the, the, produ the reproduction better even, and whatnot. Even in Nigeria, they, in Nigeria. they, 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 they yeah. that too. And okay. we are now working on that, doing a study mm. on the levels of hormone in fish. It's primarily testosterone we're, we're concerned about in, in meat. In but but, but uh, in fish, fish it's estrogen. It's, it's, exact, exactly. <laughs> so it is, it is uh, something that is going to get into the body. Yes. And then before you know it, all sorts of things will start happening. Uh. So that is you know, another, it's, it's not just that fish is healthy, but what type of fish? Uh, so we have to be very cognizant uh, of uh, that. Apparently, sugar. Uh, sugar, a lot of sugar, yeah. And then, of course, the, the starchy foods, the amala, the ba, mm. the pandemia. Exactly. Is, the vegetable yeah. should ordinarily be more than the, than the swallow. swallow. Yes. Yes. And, of course, meat. And then, you know, the, the, the starch. Uh, but we don't. It's almost reverse. <laughs> that we take a lot of starch <laughs> and then a little meat and a little vegetable. Oh but vegetable God. is extremely important. So clearly there's a lot of education that needs to go yes. into, especially the topic of food. Uh, we're going to have to take some more time for that. That's right. So um, again, thank you thank so you. much for your thank service you. to the nation, Ma. We, thank you. We, we pray that you will accomplish everything that you have thank you. In, in your heart to do. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Remember, this is your health in your hands. I'm Dr. David with the Brain and Body Foundation. Stay tuned for us next week. Cheers.